Good morning and welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. As today is the day after Cinco de Mayo, we will be singing some of our verses and our songs this morning in Spanish. And we'll do our best. <laughs> I'm Andrew Messis, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our service. Let's all take a moment to check our cell phones and be sure that they are completely off. Thank you. Now please join me in waving hello to our online friends at home. Your presence adds to our spiritual community. We appreciate you. And we are blessed to have as our musicians today, Lisa Langeau and Nancy Dunavant. Yeah. Now let's open our service by focusing our intention through our opening affirmation. Please join me in prayerfully and powerfully speaking it together three times. Together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. The all-loving goodness of God. Again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And once again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Now let's continue by reading aloud the statement of our unity together. God's love is within each of us, guiding us to dynamically express our wholeness, wisdom, and abundance. We acknowledge the universal wisdom in the Christ teachings 
and in all spiritual paths. I now choose to open to the presence of divine love and to be changed at death. Throughout this sacred time, God is uplifting me and through my heart, the world. Now our heart minister, Jeannie Fusen, will read from Unity's Daily Word. The word for today is affirmation. What do I say yes to in life? What do I affirm? Through my words, I reveal what I believe to be true. When I am centered in God, I affirm wholeness, love, and abundant good. If I find my words expressing lack, discomfort, or separation from God, I take a moment to recenter. I quiet my thoughts, close my eyes, and take a gentle breath. I come to the true center, my Christ light. I am whole, I am blessed, I am filled with peace. As I speak these words, I experience their truth. I say yes to health, to love, to abundance in my life, and claim my divine inheritance as a child of God. I say yes to my highest good. The scripture for today is James 5.12. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. The affirmation for today is, I say yes to my highest good. Repeat that with me, please. I say yes to my highest good. And again, I say yes to my highest good. Sunday. If your birthday is in May, please stand so we can wish you a happy birthday. upcoming events. The details of these and other wonderful activities are in your bulletin and on our website. Our Unity Youth are on the patio today for their annual plant event. These beautiful flowering plants make great Mother's Day gifts. Your donations go to our Youth Education Department. Unity Connects will be rolled out in June. Like Facebook, 
Unity Connects will be a great way to join groups and communicate with friends online. You will be able to see the Unity-wide calendar, view your year-to-date donations, contact teachers, members, and much more. We need your information now, so join us after services to fill out your profile. Do you want to be a part of the team that welcomes others at Unity? To hear about this or for your invitation to the host team event and lunch on Saturday, May 19th, see Jack or Suzanne at the welcome table. Now, if you are here with us for the first time, we invite you to raise your hand and keep it up for just a moment so we can bring you a gift of a shell lay. <coughs> On that lay is an affirmation we share with each of you that says, just as God has a design for each cell of the sea, so God has a design for your life. We would like to extend our special blessing to everyone new to our services both here and online. So together, we love you, we bless you, and we behold the light of God shining through you. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Now enjoy taking a moment until the music begins to greet the people around you.
we get the opportunity to be together, to be in prayer, and to touch into that silence. It's a, it's a very special experience. And if we don't give permission for it to happen, those things are often uncomfortable to us. So because we know we are in community and there are sounds and that happen even in our stillness, please Please turn on your microphone. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> so please uh, just give permission for that, that which may show up as sound around you to be there without disturbance. As we enter in, let the music guide you to that center of your heart. Father God, as we journey within, open us. Open us to your love. To your presence in us as this radiant love that is that which flows through our hearts. In that openness, we now Acknowledge that the light, the light of your presence is streaming into our beings, filling every cell with vitality in our body, every awareness of mind with wisdom and deep understanding. And your love is present. We feel it enfold us as though the mantle of the Christ were wrapped about us. And from within our own beings, that fountain of radiant love gushes forth, filling us, lifting us, awakening us. knowing that we, each one of us, are deeply and completely loved. Loved without condition. Loved because each of us 
our child of the Most High. Beloved child of God. And so gently, we move our awareness deeper to that very center of being where we experience your beautiful peace. I am filled. I am at peace. And from that peace we enter into that sacred place of stillness. place where we can let go of thought of feeling and simply rest at one with your presence following that direction given by the master as he said peace be still Mother, Father, God. Infinite love. Beloved presence. We are so grateful 
to be aware that we are one with your presence, with your light, with your love. And so we radiate this love. What a joy to send it to each one dear to us, to bless and uplift. What a joy to radiate your love across this spiritual community, becoming a part of that light and wisdom that flows through each person, blessing everyone in their world. We radiate this love to every request for prayer, knowing with each one that the presence of this love is filling their lives, bringing forth that which is the very highest. We radiate this love, sending it across the communities in which we live, out across our nation and the nations of the world that it might heal the fears of all peoples and brings forth their great wisdom and compassion and we send this love to all who join us in prayer whether in mosque or synagogue temple or church whether gathered at home or on the hillsides for in seeking to know you, we are all one. We send this love to Mother Earth and to her creatures and to the heart of every single person in the earth. For you are that love in every heart. And in that love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Together. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And once again. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing.
talks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever garden within, though the night around me be falling, but he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me. Ladies, thank you for the Spanish. <laughs> uh, that was, that was, it, uh, I've just returned from a week at Unity Village with the International Board and reminded me that uh, as, as some of the board members would lead our, our uh, experience of prayer in, in, uh, in complete Spanish, and those were some of the most beautiful. So, thank you. And a week before that, <laughs> I ran into a most interesting person. I got, it got me looking, something I wanted to share with you. Was, this man had spent some 25 years of his life in leading meditation. Uh, it was something that really was, was his life, was leading and teaching meditation around the world. And he, he was actually a part of a wonderful movement of meditation with a, 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 a world-recognized and appreciated guru. And uh, he hit a point where he was reflecting on his life. And what, what happened as he looked at his life was he recognized that his marriage wasn't working. He was having some significant health problems, and he was in a financial struggle. So he, he checked it out with his, because he met regularly with his guru, he asked the guru, and the guru said, well, just meditate and transcend it. And he realized meditation may not be the whole answer. And, and so actually, he, he really began to in investigate and, and uh, pick up some other spiritual tools. Uh, and, and when he was sharing that, it, it reminded me of a beautiful understanding from uh, Charles Fillmore's book on prosperity. And it, Fillmore said, now Fillmore is, is Unity's co-founder, amazing American mystic said, it is perfectly logical to assume that a wise and competent creator would provide for the needs of his creatures in their various stages of growth. The supply would be given as required, 
And as a necessary effort for its appreciation was made by the creature, temporal needs would be met with temporal things. Mental needs by things of like character and spiritual needs by spiritual elements. Recognizing that in, in the experience of creation, of what, what we experience in, in creation, that there is this beautiful spiritual law that goes, spirit is the life, mind is the builder, and the physical is the result. So that there is a flow of spiritual energy down from this infinite possibility, infinite energy that is the divine through the mind which takes hold of it, the mind and heart, and gives it form and substance, and then the uh, flow that brings it into material manifestation in our lives. And with that is the understanding that there are different tools, different spiritual practices that help us align to the different levels. And meditation is one. It is a beautiful attunement to the presence of that energy of spirit. But when we, when we work with the, in that mental and emotional world, we use tools like prayer, affirmation, which you, which you were, spoke about in the, in the daily word, and the experience of love, which attunes and transforms the emotional and mental patterns within us. And at the physical level, then the spiritual principle is giving. Jesus teaching, as you give, it is given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, it's poured into your lap. So the principle is giving. The tool, the primary tool, that attunes us to those highest levels of giving is the experience of the tithe, or the giving of the first tenth of what we receive uh, to the place of spiritual nourishment. So I was looking at that, that tool, and a, a number of us in, in, in our meetings as we were sitting around, we had a moment where we began going through the amazing things that we had experienced as a result of our tithing. The, the flow that seems to go beyond anything we're able to figure out, and I realized, now I, I don't know if I really want to confess this to you, but I have never lived within my income. If you're an accountant, I know that's very disturbing. <laughs> if you're a tither, you'd go, of course. <laughs> There's always more, always comes in in the most miraculous way. But that's a side. I, I knew better than to go there. Um, <laughs> so I, I'd like to share with you something from, uh, from Charles Fillmore's exploration uh, in in the Great Depression, he wrote the book Prosperity because he realized that we were really asleep to the source of abundance. And so as spiritual we, beings, we had the power to wake up and to connect with this source of infinite good and let that good flow in and through our lives. And so in the, in the book, one of the things, and, and let me mention, tithing is a tool, not the tool that there are a number of things that we do to attune to this flow. But tithing is that, that central place that takes our attention from the getting to the source. Amazing, amazing tool. But he's, he reported the experience. Now, understand, he, he wrote early uh, in the 1900s. So the culture that he was looking at for his information was, was an older one. And he was looking at the time when the uh, cotton was an extensive uh, crop in the South. And he shared the experience of a uh, pastor of a church in Georgia. And it was a real church, and the community was really being uh, harmed financially by the experience of the bull weevil and the cotton. And so the, the pastor brought to the, to the people the idea that there are a number of promises in the Bible where it talks about how the tithing protects. So what I want to do today is share with you a couple ex experiences that give us different perceptions of what is happening 
when, when we engage in this tool and this con way of connection. Okay, and so it, it, there were seven farmers that uh, agreed to take and, uh, as uh, Fillmore said, dedicate a tenth part of their land to the Lord and ask him for protection against the ravages of the boll weevil, which had been devastating the crops in the vicinity for several years. So seven farmers there in his congregation decided to do this. Fillmore reports, they took no measures to protect their crop on these dedicated acres. Yet the pest did not attack the cotton there. And the quality of the fiber was better on those acres than any that had joined them. Interesting experience. And what, what Fillmore do is, does is he then touches and helps us understand that as one, as one with this divine presence, we are connected with life, with this life principle that moves through all things. The same life principle there that is growing crops and bull weevils and uh, all, of, all of the rest of it. And that by that attunement, that as we attune then that which is healthy, that which is highest, that which is most in tune with that purpose can flow and manifest and express in, in our lives. Now as much as I appreciate cotton and boll weevils, uh, there's not a whole lot of cotton raised around here. So I, wa I wanted to share with you a different experience, an experience of an individual, because in what took place for her, I, I see so many beautiful things that I have come through my years to recognize a part of the, the gifts of this form of attunement. Okay, and the woman identifies herself as BJ. And, and BJ is at the point where she's a businesswoman, she has business, business is very difficult, things aren't working, the bills are uh, stacking up, and she's not able to see how to meet the needs she has. And so she calls her friend Ann. Now the thing about Ann is that Ann is one of those women that she regards as always having that good wisdom of how to work with money and finances. And, uh, and, and so she's, she calls Ann and she shares with Ann, okay, I've got, you know, I've got all these difficulties and she goes through, through them all. And Ann is very wonderful and understanding and not judgmental at all. And so Ann then says to BJ, you want my advice? Ann asked when I had finished telling her my sad story. Well, sure, I replied, that's why I called you. Tithe she said simply. I couldn't believe my ears. You don't understand, I objected. I just told you I don't have any money coming in, I've got all these bills piled up, and I don't know how I'm going to meet the mortgage next month. I can't tithe, I don't have anything to tithe with. Well, you asked for my advice, and I've given it to you, she said matter-of-factly. She said, all I have to share with you is my own experience. If you start to tithe, you shift your relationship with God. It is an act of faith in which you essentially say, I know I will be taken care of so I can give this money back to God. It works for me, and it works for lots of people I know too. And then she goes on and, and she, she shares with BJ how... Uh, uh, Another friend had called her up some years before in a, in a very similar situation. And so she said to, uh, to this friend, Naomi, uh, giving her the same advice. So she says, why don't you call Naomi? So BJ calls Naomi, and Naomi, who, who uh, was also in business, her, her business was real estate. Naomi says, the first time I tithed, Naomi told me, I sold a $400,000 house the very next week. I'm sure it had to be a direct result of my tithing. Naomi then goes on and tells of the unfolding of a greater harmony in her life in places where she had perceived that impossible. BJ then, she says, in short, Naomi's commitment to tithe 10% of whatever she earned transformed her life. 
Tithing did more than put her on sound financial ground. It brought her back to her Jewish faith. It strengthened the bond between her and a nephew that was very important to her. And it reunited her with her sister from which she'd been estranged. She was living a life of miracles. And so when BJ hears this, she makes the decision to go ahead and no matter how bad things are, she makes that commitment and, and takes that step in her life. She said, I've been tithing for two years now, ever since the phone conversations I had with Ann and Naomi. My finances have stabilized, and the peace of mind I feel is wonderful. The peace of mind I feel is wonderful. Tithing shifted my relationship to God from one of fearful child asking God's protection to adult partner with God in doing good in the world. It feels wonderful. Now, one of the things that I appreciate about BJ's experience is, first of all, she didn't suddenly get wealthy. I know there's, when you give a tithe check, for some of us, there's always that hope that it's the secret to the lottery. <laughs> I will confess, I have held that hope. <laughs> I'm very aware of its reality, too. Um, that this was not about the accumulation of wealth, but rather about having a healthy life financially, and in all the relationships in our world. Because they all are an expression of the divine at a physical energy. And, and attunement to that flow of good through the physical expression of life is a part of what we accomplish. And in that attunement to God as source, it takes us into ever... Uh, ever higher experiences of, of that awareness as well. Now, even though this is something that I, I do because it has, uh, it has meant everything, I, I keep remembering, I met a very good friend a couple months ago, a man who has millions, very successful, older gentleman, uh, wonderful family. It just uh, I, I, I so enjoy what this man has put together in, in the world. And, and he was saying one of the things that he's gained is that he has no fear. And then he stopped and said, whoops, I'd be afraid to stop tithing. <laughs> and I realized, so would I. <laughs> but that's, there, there's, there's a part of this because I know we're working with universal laws. And there's a part of that repressed scientist in me that I want to measure it. Okay, I really want to know, well, how good is it? Anybody have that part of you? It gets, it gets you know, says, well, give me more. So I, I want to share one more experience with you. And, and this, this one's where we get to uh, get quantitative, which is why I keep going back to it. And I've, I've shared it before, but it always brings a re-examination to me when I touch into it. In the 1940s, in Michigan, there was a church that conducted an, experience, an experiment on tithing. Now, after it's the, the experiences in my book, after the book, I found out it was a Quaker church. And I always have great appreciation for the Quakers. So, and they've got some of those scientists in there, too. So they, it was a farming community in, in Michigan, and so they took one cubic inch of wheat. Okay, and the, uh, in that cubic inch, they said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go for six years. We're going to commit to tithe from whatever is produced, and we will tithe, we will bless it, and put the nine-tenth back in the ground. At the end of six years, we'll see what you get. Okay, the uh, next slide. So the first year, 
their harvest was 50 cubic inches. Okay, so the tithe was five cubic inches. Now what they actually did was uh, cook the tithe up and fed it to the minister and his family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, so the second year they planted the nine tenths, the 45 cubic inches, and the harvest was 90 pounds, the tithe was nine pounds. Now, at the end of the six years, okay, the final year, their harvest from the tithed wheat was 72,150 bushels. Okay, so the tithe on that is 7,215 bushels. Now, at the same time they did this, Okay, they were examining, and the miller that was tracking all of these for them was calculating the normal harvest. In other words, what everybody else who was bringing in their wheat, the results they were getting. So what, they, what he calculated was if they had done the normal harvest without the tithe, returning the full ten-tenths to the ground instead of only the nine-tenths, it would be... 5,279 bushels would be the entire harvest. Returning the 10 tenths instead of the 9 tenths. Next slide. That's the comparison. The tithe wheat rendered 72,000. The not tithe wheat, 5,000. The tithe from the tithe wheat was greater than the entire production of the non-tithe in only six years. So that's not 50% better or twice as good or five times as good or eight times as good or 10 times as good or 12 times as good. What we see is in that alignment, there is a return filled with abundance. In the tithe, part of what we work with is our own ability to receive. Now, because we made a commitment here that in a number of areas we wanted to go into really in-depth study, two weeks from Tuesday, we're going to start a course called Four T's that goes for 12 weeks. In that, we're going to look at all these elements that go into creating an an in-depth experience of abundance. But in this experiment, they got to look at abundance another way. They made the calculation, if we had six more years, what could we produce? What would be that, at this rate of return, what would happen? And the miller said to them, you can't do it. It's not possible. Because there would be not enough land mass on planet Earth to receive the sixth year planting. Not enough land mass on planet Earth in 12 years from one cubic inch of wheat. God is abundant. Everything that you need is given and provided to you freely because you are. What we in this human experience do is find the tools to open us to receive it. Not enough land math and planet Earth to receive it. Let me back to the beautiful scripture in which one of the times when the prophet, prophet Malachi, is talking about tithe. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. The difference is us. It's all given. Nothing is withheld from you. You are a beloved child of God. It's given freely because you are. Not because you're right or wrong. Not because you do wonderful things or create a little chaos in life. <laughs> Some more than others. 
And not because you're in the right religious group or non-religious group makes no difference whatsoever. The difference is do we open to receive it? And to do that, the shift in awareness is to God as our source. God is my source. Join me. God is my source. God is my source. God is my source. God is my source. All the rest of that stuff in your world are just through channels through which he works to get it so that you're open to, to receive it. God is your source. And it helps me in the moment when it's going down to remember God is my instant, constant, abundant supply. Join me. God is my instant, constant, abundant supply. Again, and let yourself really feel that. God is my instant, constant, abundant supply. Again, God is my instant, constant, abundant supply. Now think, whether or not you have ever tithed or given anything in your life, and I know a lot of you do and have extensively, but right at this moment, you are richly blessed. Think of the beautiful things that fill your life. The people that help the intelligence. The wisdom that has grown in you, the talents. The opportunities that you have passed through, that are here and that are before you. I am richly blessed. Join me. I am richly blessed. It's true. Again, I am richly blessed. Tell that to your neighbor. Yes. I am. You are. Let's do it all together. We are richly blessed. Again, we are richly blessed. That. At the close of the service today, we request that you allow the children to exit the center row before the rest of us follow. If you would like prayer support for challenges or celebrations, please ask our heart ministers. They will be available on the patio after the service here in the sanctuary and on the patio. Our heart ministers are wearing the lavender stoles. You are also invited to place a prayer in our prayer request. You are also invited to place a prayer request in our prayer box by the front door or in the book center, or by selecting the prayer request button on our website. We will be praying with you throughout the week. Now it's time for our prosperity celebration. For love and action or credit card donations, there are envelopes provided in the back of each chair. I invite you to take your tithe or offering in your hand and be aware that God is the source of all your good. Repeat our affirmation with me. Together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Upon the mountain, when my Lord spoke, out of her mouth came fire and smoke. And all around me, it looked so shine. I asked my Lord if all is mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving, the body. 
body but not the soul there ain't but one train that's on this track it runs to heaven and runs right back every time i feel the spirit moving in my heart i will pray every time i feel the spirit children have decided to wait outside already by their plants for you. So they are coming in. So we'll receive these gifts, knowing that the true gift given here is that commitment on each of our hearts to touch this world in a way that brings forth its wholeness, its beauty, and its peace. And the Christ joy. Amen. So before our uh, uh, prayer of protection, let's take and do a blessing, not only to our children, but also to the child in each of us. Okay? Children, you are loved, special, and important. God loves you, and so do we. All right. So stand and take hands, and let's share together our prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And our peace song. <laughs> and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun. <laughs>